Ladies and gentlemen, from the National Rifle Association, please welcome Wayne LaPierre. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. You know, you and I have never lived through a moment like this one. I don't think there's never been a time when anti-gun politicians have been more responsible for more tragic, needless death, destruction, and crime than right now in our country. I'm talking about, and you've seen it on your TV screens, a wave of criminal violence that's sweeping across this nation. And it's fueled by politicians who hold a deep-seated hatred for mainstream American values and who openly despise our founding freedoms. The same freedoms we cherish, we revere, and we defend, it's, it's all out in the open and it's plain to see. The same politicians who want to disarm us have unlocked prison cells and released hundreds of thousands of violent felons onto our streets. The same governors and mayors who are dismantling the police are actively working to make sure criminals with guns never face justice that our laws demand. And millions of Americans as a result, are forced to live in fear. As lives are cut tragically short in Chicago, New York, LA, Philadelphia, and dozens of other cities across this nation, what are gun ban politicians doing? They're painting a bright red target on freedom's back. And they're claiming that your values and your lawfully owned guns are the root cause of the anarchy that their policies create. It's insanity. Nearly every big city in America is experiencing it. Last year, in gun-controlled Chicago, criminal gun use rose nearly 60% over the previous year. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot blamed so-called lax gun laws in other states for it. In New York City, illegal shootings doubled over the previous year, and homicide rose 30%. Mayor Bill de Blasio, he blamed coronavirus. And then he went out and he disbanded his anti-crime unit. In Houston, homicide was up nearly 50%, and drug and gang-related murders as well as the city's revolving door criminal justice system was responsible for it. They kept criminals out of jail and it kept them right on the streets. And what was Mayor Turner's response? He went out and he locked arms with Michael Bloomberg and attacked law-abiding gun owners. But let me tell you right now the dirty little secret politicians and the media won't tell you. They have the power right now, today, to clean up their cities, to save hundreds of thousands of lives, and put violent crime to a virtual end. All they have to do is enforce the existing gun laws. That's it. Go out and do your job. If you really want to stop violent crime, take criminals off the streets. When you do that, you know what happens? Crime goes down. Everything else, it's smoke and mirrors. You could do that right now, Mayor Bill de Blasio. Protect the innocent, Mayor Lightfoot. Safeguard your city, Mayor Turner. Enforce the laws on the books and prosecute the criminals. Do it. You have no excuse. But you know what? And here's another dirty little secret gun ban politicians like Biden, Schumer, and Pelosi, they won't tell you. 
They're using rising homicide statistics as political fodder in their warped crusade against the Second Amendment. Criminals committing crimes with guns gives them the platform they need to lie and attack your freedom. It keeps the TV cameras always pointed in their direction. And it keeps an endless stream of money flowing into their campaign coffers from billionaires like Michael Bloomberg. What a sick, twisted business they're in. They'd, yeah. They'd rather get tough on the law abiding than go out and get tough on criminals. They'd rather kill the Second Amendment than save lives. They want each and every one of us to be forced to confront evil with empty hands. The leftist playbook, it's wide open for anyone to see. And it goes like this. Empty the prisons. Let criminals run free. Hamstring the police. Surrender the streets. And then hold freedom hostage and demand that honest citizens like you and me give up our guns as the price for ending the criminal bloodshed that their policies enable. And, and, that, and now, it's not just our Second Amendment rights that are at stake. It's our country as we know it, and literally our right to survive. Gun-hating politicians, big tech, the media, they're all working together to shame us, censor us, cancel us, and submit, have us submit to their demands that we surrender our freedom and that the right to self-defense be reserved only for politicians and the wealthy elites. But let me tell you right here and right now, the NRA will not submit. We will not allow them to define the Second Amendment in their terms. We will not surrender our freedoms. I promise you that. In, in fact, we have our own list of demands. Before one more innocent American becomes a needless casualty, before one more hardworking mom or dad becomes a tragic crime statistic, before one more honest citizen becomes another chalk line on a city sidewalk, we demand that politicians enforce the laws on the books. We demand that criminals do hard time for hard crime. We demand that taxpaying citizens get the police protection they deserve. And we demand that every law-abiding American have the sacred right guaranteed by our Constitution to keep and bear arms to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Our demands are for justice. Our demands are deeply rooted in our Constitution and the guiding principles of freedom that make America the greatest nation in the world. As we gather here today, we exercise our right to jointly express our beliefs with the eyes of the nation upon us. And that's a good thing, because every American deserves to hear the truth. But there's a difference between free and honest debate and censorship. There's a difference between the rule of law and the rule of man. And there's a difference between peaceful protest and mob tyranny. There's a difference between a criminal with a gun and law-abiding citizens with a gun. These, these are basic truths. And no matter how much our political opponents 
and their dishonest allies in the media try to twist them and pervert them and destroy them, the five million men and women of the NRA will always fight for them. I promise you that. Our fight is for what's good and natural and pure. We appeal to the best instincts of humanity. Freedom for all, regardless of gender, race, or creed. Individual liberty and the responsibility that comes with it. Respect for the rule of law. Love for our country and for our fellow Americans. If you, as you sit here this afternoon, believe in these principles, if what I've just described sounds like you, then your natural home is right here with the National Rifle Association of America. You know it as well as I do. Politicians let you down. Principles never do. And it's by fighting on principle that the National Rifle Association is the oldest and most successful civil rights organization in the history of mankind. In, in fact, throughout our history, the NRA's fight for civil rights has not only been defending the Second Amendment, but also the First Amendment. I'll tell you a story. 18 years ago, when politicians in Washington tried to muzzle free speech, it was the NRA and the American Civil Liberties Union and others who fought back to defend the First Amendment. And today, as Governor Cuomo and his Attorney General Letitia James contrive ways to weaponize government power, to silence and destroy your voice, my voice, and the voices of NRA members, we are fighting back again with the help of others and the American Civil Liberties Union. Not, not only to defend our right of free speech, but the First Amendment rights of all Americans to free speech. You see, what Cuomo and James don't understand is they can't kill the NRA. They can't. We're not just a concrete building in Washington, D.C., just outside of a city. The NRA and our values, our passions, and our principles, they beat strongly in the hearts of tens of millions of Americans all across this nation. So sorry, Cuomo. Sorry, James. You can no more kill the NRA than you could stop the sun from rising in the east. You know, you've probably heard me say this before, but it's true. When you stand for freedom, you get more of it. And NRA members standing together over the past four decades have achieved a historic restoration of freedom for which all Americans can be thankful. But I beg you, never ever forget that it all could have been lost, like is sadly the case in so many other countries. But all of this, it's bigger than the NRA. It's about constitutional freedom for all. And because of our success right now, we're fighting politicians and regulators determined to weaponize government power and destroy what the NRA does simply because they don't like us and because we win. It's what's going on right now, and I'm going to say this slow because it's true, is the most appalling deviation from a free and open society that the United States of America has ever seen. Yeah. 
That's why we at the NRA have filed two First Amendment lawsuits that put the NRA at the tip of the spear fighting for the constitutional rights of all groups in this country. And on top of that, we've recently announced that we're pursuing a reorganization plan. Under the protection of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code, the NRA is creating a blueprint that will allow us to continue as one of the leading civil rights organizations in the world. And pending the approval of the court, we plan to reorganize in the state of Texas. <laughs> Away from the toxic political environment in New York, where elected officials wield their power with reckless abandon, where they punish banks and insurance companies who dare to do business with the NRA. But you know what? Their actions only strengthen our resolve. They steal us for the fight. Like right here in Florida, where we are today, Texas celebrates constitutional freedom. It's, it's a state. Yeah, I see some Texans are here. All right. It's a state that offers a fair regulatory environment and a positive business climate and the foundation from which we will build an even stronger National Rifle Association. You know, we win because we stand for truth and justice. Who's more responsible for protecting our lives and our loved ones than us? Why should I have to give up my right to survive by refusing to arrest, prosecute, and incarcerate violent criminals? Politicians abdicate their responsibility to protect us. So we're not going to apologize for defending our most basic freedom. Because far too often in a dangerous world, the Second Amendment is all we have. At the very root, at the very root of American consciousness is the truth that I have a right to defend myself. Even gun ban elitists live that truth. You've noticed they all have armed protection. They lean on political, political connections to game the system, and they get all the permits they want. Celebrities, billionaires, Wall Street executives, friends of the mayor, they get all the permits they want. They all believe strongly in their amendment rights. They just don't believe in yours. In fact, the histo history of the gun control movement has always been rooted in elitism, racism, terror, and oppression of the worst kind. In fact, the very first gun control laws were put in force after the Civil War, and they were designed for the singular and specific purpose of denying African Americans their Second Amendment rights. Why? Because racist politicians and their allies in the KKK wanted to oppress, terrorize, and murder African Americans at will and without resistance. It was the NRA, from its founding, that fought for and helped secure the Second Amendment rights of African Americans and all Americans. The fact is that before the color barrier was broken in professional sports, before it was broken in schools, lunch lines, water fountains, in the media, or out there in Hollywood, before all of that, and since our founding 150 years ago, the National Rifle Association of America has not only welcomed all Americans, we have fought for the civil rights and constitutional freedom of all Americans. And I promise you, we will never, ever stop fighting 
for the right of every law-abiding American to protect himself with a gun. And so, to President Biden, Schumer, Pelosi, and their media, I say, if you don't care about our Second Amendment right to protect ourselves, then you don't care about us at all. Don't talk to us about your plans for safety unless you defend our Second Amendment rights. Don't go on TV lamenting another tragic violent crime unless you enforce the laws on the books and take criminals off the streets. And don't give us your hollow, empty rhetoric because we're all on to you. We don't believe you, you're not honest, because you would deny us our most basic fundamental right to stay alive. You know, all of us in this room today and watching around the country are still united by a single promise. It's a promise we first made when we were kids, and it goes like this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the one and only USA, you're right. But take this to heart, please. Don't let the chaos of current events tarnish the majesty of its meaning. We don't promise to try when it's convenient. We pledge our allegiance, not to who's powerful or popular, but to the flag of the United States of America and not just to its stars and stripes, but to the republic for which it stands, which isn't one faction, but one nation, not under tyranny, but under God, not divided, but indivisible, with liberty and justice, not for a few, but for all. My friends, We've now come to a point in time when the full weight of that promise rests squarely on our shoulders. Joe Biden and his allies in Congress are publicly vowing to flat out decimate the Second Amendment and destroy the promise of liberty and freedom that is America. They don't want to just regulate your gun rights or chip away at your freedom around the edges. They want to register, ban, and confiscate your firearms. And at the same time, they're making it easier for criminals and violent ones to roam our streets. These are mistakes that we face, and they couldn't be higher. I know that many of you are beaten down by the endless stream of struggles the many past months have presented. The neighbors are out there working overtime to convince Americans that the Second Amendment's days are numbered. But I say they're wrong. I say that with a full confidence because of people like you. Never forget that your voice resonates far beyond this room. It carries far beyond the walls of your own home. And when you're an NRA member, it resonates even farther and wider, carrying the weight of tens of millions of NRA members and even more Americans who support our cause and look to us for leadership. There is no more unstoppable force in the history of politics than NRA members 
And I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, our enemies know that too. A strong NRA wins. So from where you sit right now, I'm asking you, please join us. Join millions of freedom-loving patriots all across this nation by joining the National Rifle Association of America. And let history remember that when Biden and Schumer and Pelosi and their billionaire backers tried to destroy our freedom, that you were there, you fought back, you stood in the breach, you defended America and our Constitution, and you were the reason our Second Amendment rights, our American values, our freedom, not only survived, but thrived for decades and decades to come. Thank you, God bless all of you, and God bless America. Thank you very much.